Uh, it's good to finally meet you at last. Get some face time. Who here is the key grip? You. You. Hit that AD in the face really fucking hard. Sorry, man. Ow, ow, ow. Today, I'm going to share my pre-production process along with some templates and tools that I use to streamline my process, starting with finalizing the script. I don't read the script, script reads me. What the hell does that even mean? Block script just gives everyone something to work from and make sure everyone's on the same page. I'm not always the best about this. I unfortunately make changes up until the last minute sometimes, but Hypothetically, you shouldn't do it. It's not essential to use traditional screenplay format, but it is important to have a solid plan to work from. I think it's much easier to arrive on set with a well-developed script rather than attempting to find the scene or make last-minute rewrites. Show me the money. Next, I finalize the budget and create a preliminary schedule. This can vary greatly between projects, but having a clear budget early is very important. And in general, I would just try to overestimate how much it's going to take because you're always going to run into last minute expenses and things like that. Before bringing others onto the project, I create a comprehensive deck, mood board, storyboards, and sometimes character breakdowns. These tools just help visualize the project and establish a tone and style and make sure that everyone like clearly understands like the tone. I usually start on these during the script phase and then just work on them when writing gets monotonous. I'll leave links to my deck templates in the description that you can use for your projects. Once the creative elements are in place, I start onboarding the crew. I just added two more guys to my wolf pack. I use Notion to keep everything organized and make sure everyone has access to the necessary documents. Different projects require wildly different sizes of crew, but normally I at least work with the casting director and cinematographer. Casting, I always do the same way. Um, you try to get the right person for the role. Right. <laughs> Casting is a crucial part of pre-production, and it's at this point that we'll start doing auditions or reach out to talent within our network. Phoenix? Yes? I use Notion to onboard the cast as well. Other resources that I use quite a bit are local Facebook groups and Backstage.com. You'll want to make sure that you get everyone to sign a talent release form before the actual day of the shoot, and I'll leave a link to the release I use in the description. I mean, it, listen, we're talking about practice. Not a game, not a game, not a game. As far as rehearsal, I don't necessarily love being in rehearsal myself, but I like to facilitate rehearsal if the actors need it. I'll make sure they have each other's information and make sure that they have plenty of time beforehand to do that, but it's not something that I actively like to participate in because I feel like they need their own space to find the character and everything, and if I'm nitpicking things from the very beginning, it's not going to be helpful. What you getting at with the book script? Spit that shit out, man! Next is breaking down the script, which just involves identifying all the elements for each scene, such as props, costumes, special effects, and so on. At this point, you try to get as detailed as possible and just make sure that nothing seeps through the cracks because the last thing you want to do is get there on the day of the scene and realize that you need something important, which has happened to me more than once. There's a lot of different systems for this. A lot of people use different color highlighters, but it's just something you kind of have to work out for yourself. Now that the script is broken down, this is normally where I move on to location scouting because I feel like it's the most foundational to everything else that comes after. A lot of times I'll work with the location manager just because they already have the existing connections. But there's also plenty of times I just reach out to local businesses or organizations myself. And most of the time they're more than happy to let us film there, especially if it's during off hours. But if neither of those are option for you, you can always find some pretty good locations online or just rent somewhere off like an Airbnb. And then worst case scenario, I'll just go online and start looking. There's a lot of different websites that you can find locations on. Once I find the location I want, I try to get a location agreement signed before the day of. I'll leave a link to the one I use in the description as well. You'll also have to get any permits or anything that you'll need before the day of, but I try to get all this locked in as far in advance as possible. That way you're not rushing right before the shoot. After I secure the locations, this is normally where I move on to everything else that we outlined in the broken down script, such as props, wardrobe, extras, things like that that could be dependent on the location. If I'm working with a production designer, I just try to make sure that I have a clearly outlined budget and mood boards from the very beginning. As I'm getting all the logistics locked in and hunting down like all the props and specific wardrobe from like thrift shops, this is the time in which I'm working with my cinematographer to create a shot list. And it's at this point in the process that we really try to finalize the visual style and hammer out any of the technical details for each shot. We try to get as granular as possible like what exact lenses, what's the camera movement going to be, lighting setups, and then any equipment we might need for each specific shot. The shot list is something else that I try to give out as much as possible on the day because I feel like it helps make sure that everyone's on the same track and knows what exactly we have to do. And lastly, we finalize the shooting schedule. 
and it can be rather difficult to plan out how long each setup will take. So I find that it's better to overestimate rather than underestimate because no one is going to complain about getting done early. Again, I try to give this out to the cast and crew as much as possible so that everyone knows exactly what the expectations are on the day. I also create specific call sheets for each day of the shoot, and then I make it a priority to send out those call sheets to the cast and crew at least a week before. And then it's on to production, which I will cover in a different video. But thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of this that you can take on to your next production. And yeah, have a good day. Do you know what to do about an actor if they whine about anything? You pull on their pants and you spank their ass. You spank that ass, Les.